over your investment journey in if you have five you know, if you have 10, 10 baggers in your investment journey of 30, 40 years or 100 baggers, I'm sure you're, or one or 200 baggers, I'm sure you will come out on top uh, in the long run. Just to give you an example, in a 10, in a 10 stock portfolio, right? If, if you, be, all you need is one stock to become 10x. And if you lose a significant amount of money, even on the rest of the stocks, you're still going to come out, probably end up doubling your money. So that's that's very, very clear uh, this. As I said, Avanti became a 200 bagger for me, but it came after I missed out on so many 100 baggers. I bought stocks, sold at 50%, 100% returns, 200% returns, and then uh, I saw them go up 5x, 10x, 50x, 100x. I'll take you through my uh, investment journey right from 2001 uh, onwards. So from 2001 to 2007, if you remember, it was the mother of all bull markets, right? Nearly 1,000 stocks went up 100x. I did not, and I don't know of anyone who made that kind of return, except the promoters, because promoters usually don't end up uh, selling their stakes, right? And I know very few who made that kind of money. Even during that period, what I, money I made, I made very little money, on very small capital that was my and it was a learning for me right we'd all heard buffett had compounded at 20 percent kagger i remember very clearly and one day one uh, year in 2004 i went and told my ex-boss look i've made 25 percent returns for my uh, for the year and i think i'm done right means uh, that's all i need to do and my boss said look it doesn't work like that you're going to have years where you're going to make 100 percent returns and there are years where you're going to lose 50 percent, 60 percent. So don't don't limit yourself to 20, 25 percent returns. Think think bigger. I think that was one of the biggest learnings that I got uh, got from him. So as he said, the bull market, the mother of bull markets, passed by me. I, but what I what did I do? Uh, what did I do? I keenly observed the market over that period, right? Uh, I I saw Tata Steel, I saw Hindalco, I saw NMDC, I saw so many of the commodity stocks go up 50x, 100x, Larson and Tubro, Siemens, all those stocks. I did not buy any of these of the, those stocks. But what I did is I learned from my mistakes. And those mistakes eventually allowed me to make money 7, 8, 10 years down the line. I saw so many stocks quoting at 2 and 3 and 4 P multiple and I did not buy because I wanted them to correct 10, 20%. I have seen stocks at 1 P multiple. I've seen Madhukan projects at 1 P multiple and then the stock went up 30x, 40x. I saw Symphony at 1 P multiple with net cash on the balance sheet. And then the stock went up 100x. But very early, you have very moral high, uh, you know, you have very high morals and you say that this is a company that, that does not declare dividends. And you said, okay, ye to usko lena hi nahi hai. because this is not Berkshire Hathaway. And then eventually you see the stock price go up 100x and you realize the market is not perfect, right? I've seen the best of stocks get derated, uh, derated and I've seen the worst of stocks get re-rated and being called as quality. So as I said, from my first this 2002, 2007, I remember I started my uh, career as a, as a sell-side banking analyst, right? And it was the biggest period as far as public sector banks were concerned and everybody was so bullish on public sector banks that there was a time in 2004 wherein an analyst made you could not get place to stand for public sector banks but that's that's besides i think uh, my first big mistake as i said and i'm going to talk uh, stock names here uh, and i'm sure that's fodder for some of the trolls to use against me but that's 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 okay I remember very well, I started my career as a banking analyst. My first report was Vijaya Bank, right? Some fund manager was lucky enough. He liked the idea. He bought it. 15 years later, the stock price was at the same price at which I had initially began my coverage. So, so that was that was a pretty ba bad start, right? But uh, besides that, after that, I moved to being... Uh, uh, and as a, as a financial analyst, I remember I covered Bajaj Auto Finance at a market cap of probably close to 300 crores, probably lesser. Kotak Mahindra, Kotak Mahindra Financial at less than 1,000 crores. And we know what has happened to these stocks 
over that period. Did I own any of those stocks for that period? No, I did not. Right, probably after making 300, 400% return or in some case 100% return, I booked my profits and I uh, went off. So one first biggest learning that in 20 years, I bought and sold stocks. And probably the best thing that could have happened for me is I would have only bought stocks and not sold any of them. I think I would have adjusted for all the pain and tension and anxiety. I think I would have done better than that. So one, yes, that, that's one of my biggest mistakes. That is buying and selling stock. He said my first research report was on Vijaya Bank. I started, then I went to my boss and I told him I want to start covering mid caps. And he was, uh, and he said, yes, why not? So say, uh, when I started covering mid caps, I wrote reports on some very good companies. I wrote uh, report on Havels. Stock price was 120 rupees, 10 paid up. It was available at 3P with a market cap of 160 crores. I I'm, I'm probably made 50, 60% returns. And eventually, we all know what has happened to Havel since then. I don't even know what the market cap is right now. That's that, But that's fine. That's an error of omission. I also wrote, wrote a report on Samtel Color. And I very clearly remember Samtel Color had acquired Thompson's, you know, CPT factories in the world. And it was a big announcement. And I, I wrote that report. And the stock was available at 3P multiple. And... The story looked good. You spoke to the management and they're talking about 30-40% CAGR growth and all those stuff. I wrote the report and I went and I was young, right? I was I was fairly young in my career. I was probably three, four years into my career. And I went and pitched that stock to Sanjay Bhattacharya. And he rubbished the report. He said, you know, Ki, isko kuch nahi ho sakta. Uh, this is... This is uh, this is a dying business. And internally, I thought, obviously, he was on the buy side. I was on the sell side. And internally, I thought, Are isko kuch nahi aata. Aata to mere koi hai. <laughs> right? And that's, as I said, that's, that's also a, a, a mistake that you commit in your youth, that you are very cocky and you think you know everything. And eventually, that's where the market humbles you and teaches you over a period of time. And eventually, the stock went to zero. So first, I have had two stocks which have eventually gone to zero. One was, as I said, and that's that's a very very good number in 20 years of investing. If you have had only two stocks which have gone to zero, so one that was a research report, which which I wrote and which eventually went to zero. So that's that's one mistake. The second mistake which which I did uh, in which went to zero was in my investing journey. We'll discuss that uh, later on. So I, I put out a chronological order of things. 2008 came, valuations were through the roof. I did not invest in any of the infra companies, any of those stocks. The good thing is I've always avoided the bubbles, right? Even in 1999, I was doing my article ship. And 98, 99, everyone was into tech stocks. Uh, luckily for me, I did not invest into any of the tech stocks till 2000, and, uh, 2000 late 2000. Even at that point in time, after global tech, so in with my I, my dad had given me fifty thousand rupees to invest in the markets, and after the tech bubble had burst, I bought four five stocks. Uh, I bought global tele global tel, uh, global tele not films global tele, and it had corrected eighty percent, and then I bought the stock and I was like wow look people bought at the top people bought it at thirty six hundred. And I'm buying it at 300 or 400. I bought Z Telefilms after it had corrected 80, 90%. I bought MRF at, believe it or not, 400 rupees. And I bought ITC. And probably, and I bought MTNL during those. Uh, because MTNL was a nifty stock. It was available at 10 times earnings. And what time basis, the AKP ratio was the P-ratio. Of those, I bought Global Tele. And G corrected even 70-80% from my purchase price. That's when I realized the definition of a stock which has lost 90%. The definition of a stock which has lost 90% is a stock which lost 80% and then halved. <laughs> right? So <laughs> you can imagine that's where they say don't fall, uh, don't catch a falling knife. And typical retail mistake I did after I bought IDC, immediately it corrected as well. And since then, after that, the stock, uh, and when it came back to my cost, I sold it off. 
typical retail right after i bought the stock crash 20% because uh, this was bad and then itc eventually went up 50x mrf i sold at a 25 30% profit and we all know what has happened to mrf from 400 to 71000 so even as a rookie investor who didn't know anything if and only if i have, would have bought shares and not sold i think i would have probably done better so one was that 2008 i wasn't into any of these things 2009 you know i uh, at the bottom i was getting very bullish on the markets the valuations were mouth watering and then i went and met one of the companies i clearly remember the meeting the name of the company was gandhi metal uh, tubes and i generally don't meet management but at that point in time i met him and this was just after the lehman crisis and he said what recovery he said i had bought i kept one month of uh, you know my working capital cycle uh, finish uh, raw material inventory was one month okay wo one month ka inventory mein sales have become one third so that inventory has anyways become 3x and then he said prices have corrected by agar agar th- another 30 uh, you know have become one third so the inventory that i am holding is actually worth nine months and he scared the shit out of me and after that meeting i said the recovery is never happening in the stock markets right and we all know with what happened with the money printing and everything and eventually 6 months later i turned my view but that's fine what i'm saying is that was again a mistake right the management the person who's sitting on the other side is equally prone to herd immunity as uh, herd mentality as i am that's one thing i realized 2007 every single promoter in the country wanted to set up a power plant and these are one of the brightest guys uh, the you know the richest people uh, that you can think of 2010 11 we started our portfolio management service and right and in that investing period we have delivered close to what 11x returns for a client we've had multiple multi baggers but there's one name which stands out and which is where we haven't lost a lot of money but we've lost a lot as far as our reputation is concerned any time somebody wants to troll me on twitter they use that name and i think that's that's talwalkar right we did a uh, my mistake completely on that we did a porter's analysis and it fit all the boxes so every time i do, uh, do a porter's analysis and a stock fits all the uh, boxes i get a little scared now again this is from experience one stock that i bought was similarly was global spirits and uh, it fit all the boxes as far as porters is concerned strong demand low competition uh, right all those things so the amount that we lost lost on talwalkar is only 20 crores it went to zero uh, we lost 20 crores but the damage uh, we made more than 1000 odd crores profit for our client so you imagine it is not even 2% of the loss is not even 2% of the profits overall net profits that we have made for our client but the reputational damage that it did to us was very much so what's my biggest learning from that as a public fund manager you might miss out on certain opportunities that is fine but don't right everything is out there in the open so people can uh, uh, always use anything against you and that that's that's really okay but will we commit mistakes in the future yes we will but in 10 years if we, we i don't think so we've had any stock which has lost more than 50% probably one or two from the time we purchased and from the time we sold in in, in the uh, interim yes it does happen and two very very important uh, this again this is this is very interesting this is very interesting right talking about mistakes at the bull market you look rock star you really do all your portfolios in green right and you're making uh, and everything is fl- everything is flying right 2017 we were 55% cagr if you looked at a the portfolio there were rounds of a portfolio doing and it looks so good all the stocks were up 300 400 500 i don't know how many percentage points and 2020 we were people were saying all your stocks are kachra and if you looked at a portfolio a lot of the st- our stocks were actually in red and 2022 come 5 years later our portfolio hasn't changed much 
I didn't sell in 2000. I, I, we did make a lot of exits in 2017, but we were held uh, left with some stocks. 2019, 20, we owned the same stocks, and today we own the same stocks. And I'm sure five years down the line, people are going to say, "Wow, what such great, what what great company, uh, what great companies do they own?" Uh, uh, so people's perception about us, about stocks, about everything in general, changes with price. At one trillion dollar market cap, richest person in the world, Elon Musk was a rock star. I would want to see what happens when the stock corrects 70%, 80%. I'll have a very interesting anecdote here uh, about two two of the most difficult years as far as my investing journey is concerned. One was 2008 and the other was 2013. 2008, obviously we know because 2008-9, because we know what happened during, after the global financial crisis, right? The small cap index corrected by 90%, the Sensex corrected by 70%. And 2013 was a pretty brutal year as far as small caps were concerned because that that is the time when uh, the INR hit seven, probably 70 rupees for the first time and interest rates were 11, 12% and uh, inflation was running high. And it was a pretty bad time as far as uh, small cap stocks were concerned. So in 2008, I had a fantastic portfolio, 2008, 2009. I had 30% of my portfolio in pharma. The entire pharma space was available at less than in single digit P multiple. And eventually over the next four years, four or five years, the pharma stocks rallied anywhere between 20X to 100X. The worst of the stocks rallied from stocks like Indoco, Unicam, Full Ford, Pfizer, were available at single digit P multiple. Lupin, Dr. Reddy were all available at less than 10 P multiples. And I had some fantastic companies with cash on the balance sheet and everything. And yet my portfolio during that period was down 35, 40% or something. And in that year, right, Nira was here and he will remember, there was only one stock on which we made money, which was Satyam. <laughs> and it was a matter of luck. It was a matter of luck, right? So luck plays a very important role in the stock market. The stock was cracking and obviously the insiders were selling, but it cracked so much and with so much balance sheet and valuation, I just bought the stock. And after we bought the stock, the stock rallied 25, 30%. And for whatever reason, I just sold it. Typically, I don't sell. I'm, I'm a very long-term investor, but for whatever reason, I sold it. And after we sold it, the announcement came within one week that September, uh, the, the entire scam came out. So I owned a fantastic portfolio. The markets were bad. And the only stock I made money on, everyone else lost money on Satyam and we actually made money on Satyam. So there are times when you have a great portfolio, but if the market is bad, you're not going to make money. 2013, we started we started up uh, PMS. We went up 30% and immediately we came back 30% down. Uh, and again, that was a very, very bad year as far as small caps and mid caps were concerned. And that year, we made, after we started, we made money on only one stock, which is Liberty Phosphates. And the reason we made money on Liberty Phosphates, and we made some really good money. It saved us during that period, right? The 30% rally to a large extent was led by Liberty Phosphates. And we made that money because Coromandel came and acquired uh, Liberty. And we didn't know it. So it was like, okay, we saved it. But the whole thing, again, one more thing is in the markets, there are times where you're going to make money on the basis of skill. And there are times where you're going to make money on the basis of luck and you sh- should be able to distinguish between the two. And a lot of people are not able to distinguish between the two. <clears throat> so yeah, that's that's about uh, a lot of my investing mistakes are concerned. That doesn't mean uh, this. I think uh, let's let's open the floor to questions. I, I hope guys, you, hello? Yeah, Deepika, uh, was I audible? Yeah, 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 you're audible, okay, audible. Okay, perfect, perfect. We can open the floor for questions. So, yeah, we'll open the floor for questions. And the first thing that I want is, I think, uh, you know, Kunal Bihani asked a very, very interesting question. 
and i would really want to answer that one first so kunal if you're there can you can you ask that question again please for the benefit of everyone so i'm trying to get kunal on the floor so till then i will just speak out what his question is so he wanted to know about uh i guess the pattern pattern recognition, recognition right yes and i think it's 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 very so as i said these are all the mistakes that i committed but the one thing that i did is i learned from this mistake so i've spent a lot of time reading the history of stock markets we did in fact we are going to come out with a very interesting series on past bubbles and we're not going to be talking about tulip mania or we're not going to be talking about the south sea bubble or mississippi bubble everyone knows about that we've dug beyond the first 5 10 pages of google and we've gone uh, this so there's going to be very interesting and if you look at it the pattern of mistakes that people commit in the stock market remains the same as i said so so that kunal is here yeah hey, kunal go ahead kunal you're on mute okay am i audible now yes yes you're audible Okay, great, great. Thanks a lot, Siddharth. The Saturdays are always a delight to hear to you, and uh, thanks for all the details. One thing, you know, I understand through the investing journey, whatever cases, you know, which we have discussed in terms of uh, omission, commission, uh, being overconfident on something. Are there yeah. common thread, right? I mean, which cuts through most of them. I understand some will fall under the category where you say that I am more bullish. Okay, correct. Right. a galat time pe just just one thing like like you said pharma rally 2850x but again there was a point beyond 2015 where if you would have held on your returns would have been like i don't know 2x or 3x Correct. after all the decline so where right. is that point you know where you say ki bas ab bahut ho gaya let's take some money of the table and still be in the game to see ki aage ki story kya hai i mean right. that is the pattern right. recognition uh which i just want to understand Right. So, see, Kunal, you talk about pattern recognition, and as I said, there are two ways to learn in the markets. One is you go back into history, you read a lot, and you learn from other people's mistakes. Mm. And according to me, that is, we did port, port, and uh, port, and uh, this in uh, RCE exams, right? And this is where you are crashing the process. Okay. If you learn from other, you will still make your mistakes. but if you're going to read a lot the one thing that we ensure in our office is that people read a lot of history right shubham and our entire team pratiksha and everyone have and nishit have read the gogo years and they can see the gogo years playing out right in front of them over the last one one and a half years whatever has happened in the last one one and a half years if you open gogo years right that that point in time there was gerard sai today you have kathy wood correct today you had the unlisted space that time you had all the companies who were doing leverage buyouts and everything you you it's a fantastic book and you will see so what that is pattern recognition pattern recognition is we all our clubhouse sessions that we have done mm. it was just basically pattern recognition we discussed ipos when right 3 yeah. 4 months back yeah and you know what has happened to the ipos what the fate awaits these ipos so reading history is important because you learn from the mistakes of others and you will still commit your mistakes but the amount of mistakes that you will commit will be much lesser the amount of mistakes that you will commit will be much lesser and you will be able to relate to it okay yeah yeah i read something about this uh in the, in that book right uh, yeah so everything all our club house sessions whether we did on commodities whether we did on ipos whether we did on a lot of the other topics it effectively was my pattern recognition from the past correct correct uh, yeah. can i chip in one question that fine yeah okay i just want to understand yes. if you have two stocks where you feel ki are set added to the portfolio everything is yeah. matching to the nth degree how do you decide right. final entry which to dena i mean in case there is uh, some sort of a last filtering criteria ki this is it now let's see what is to be done between these two or three stocks whatever it perfect so it's a very good question a lot of people ask me when i'm constructing my portfolio ki how do you allocate weightages and i say 16 into 6 okay. 
that is 16 into 6 is 96 percent can you hear me yeah, yeah. yeah okay so 96 percent and beyond that i use my discretion to allocate one one percent to four stocks okay and i always use that because it always tells me that out of those four stocks two do well and two don't do well mm. <laughs> so it the most the thing is you ought to know what you know and what you don't know I know that if I select a basket of 15 stocks, 16 stocks, and if I hold it on over a period of a longer period, there will be some stocks, say out of that 16 stocks, 10 stocks will be multi -viable. That's 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 what I have seen over my this. There will be four stocks which will perform in line with the markets, and there will be two stocks where I lose money, or probably go down or whatever. Correct. And while you might buy with a lot of margin of safety, the future is uncertain. So you cannot really, really predict the future. So then do I switch in and out of stocks? No, I really don't. Right. How do I know that if, okay, I want to switch out of this stock and I want to include this stock. How do I know whether uh, that one particular stock is going to do better than my one particular stock? Correct. It's a very, very difficult call to make. So the one thing that sets us out from a lot of the other people also is our patience. We've held on to stocks for the last, as I said, last five years, barely a portfolio has turned. We are holding stocks from 2012 to 2013. Mm -hmm. uh, 2012, 2013, even now. Right? And we have seen, somebody asked me that your top holding, you saw 70% drawdown and you still held. I said, yes, I did. <laughs> because there was no reason for me to fundamentally sell the, sell the stock. I said, forget me, the three of the smartest investors that I know of in the country, mm -hmm. uh, who, not the fund managers, but I'm talking about people who buy stocks for them, which is Radha Kishan Damani, the Inam Group, and Rakesh Junjanwala. The one pattern recognition that you will see is since the time I joined the industry, they're holding the same stocks, or at least their top holdings. Mm -hmm. Radha Kishan Damani still owns Gillette, he still owns the BST Industries. DMART is there, Rakesh Junjunala owned Crystal, Titan, all these things way back in 2000, uh, 2001. The Inam group probably holds stocks since the 1970s and 18. So that's a major pattern recognition. And then they saw 1999, they saw global financial crisis, they saw COVID, and probably they saw 90% drawdown on some of their stocks. Mm. So if you, so if you, and then people say 50% drawdown stock, kaise karte ho? you want to become rich, be prepared for that. That's the nature of the beast. That is the, I don't set the rules in life or in stock markets. I accept the rules and I learn to play the game. Stock market is volatile, right? If you ex think that I don't want volatility, then you cannot, you know, you cannot eat your cake and uh, have it too. Sorry. So yeah, that's it. Oh. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks yeah. a lot. Thank you. Bye. So, uh, thank you, Kunal. Next up, we have Hitesh Jain. Hi, Hitesh. Yeah, hi. Hi, Hitesh. hi Siddharth. Good morning. Uh, thanks for morning. Uh, beautiful insights. Uh, can uh, Can you tell uh, the sector which you are bullish on for next one or two years? Uh, so again, as I said, I, I really don't want to discuss uh, sectors or any of those things. I can go wrong. I can withstand 70% drawdowns. I can withstand 50% drawdowns. My entire portfolio went down by 50% uh, in COVID. And I did not sell a single share. And then it has rallied 4x. You might not have the capacity or you might. So never, never ask for tips. Never give tips. Learn to... Uh, it, it is not very complicated. So I... I, I wo, wo galti mere se nahi hoga. Okay, sure. Uh, thanks, Siddharth. Thank you, Hitesh. We have Shubham Saurav with us. Hello, Shubham. Hi, Shubham. Hello. Uh, Shubham, you're on mute. Uh, hello. Am I audible, ma'am? Yes, yes. Uh, so very good, good morning. Uh, yeah, so very good morning. And so I am a very huge fan of you. And I am following you from the last session that you did with the Omkara Capital. And from that, okay. I got introduced with you. Sir, uh, like okay. I am basically a 21 year uh, student. I am a fourth year engineering student. Currently completed my CMT. I am basically into technical analysis. Sir, I want to know okay. the perspective. Like I have uh, uh, found only two Indian fund managers, like you and Kenneth Andrade, sir, who have a very mm -hmm. 
pointed view like they know what they are doing and they don't know yaar mere ko like uh, i will be buying technology also i will be buying metals also i will be buying like i will be uh, like jack of all trades they have a very pointed view like you you and uh, kenneth sir had a tony is telling from last uh, two years or something the banks will underperform in the current uh, macro environment so Correct. i want to know like uh, uh, in your uh, in your last 20 years of experience like how you decided mm-hmm. that i will be taking this approach in my life that i will have a very pointed view i won't be uh, doing a diversified approach he like i won't be missing that like in this way you might miss a trade like a particular mm-hmm. stock in the financial may become a multi tiger you will miss that because you are very clear in that sector so how you uh, uh, like uh, keep that patience and also how you keep that confidence that you have with my uh, like right now commodity i we know that you are very bullish on commodity right now uh, some mag- like dollar are uh, dollar strength and a commodity sector is consolidating and few of the yeah, uh, no, no, so i i get your uh, question shubha yes. so one you have to understand one thing doesn't matter who you are your capital is finite yes even for rakesh junjunwala and for radhakishan the money their capital is finite yes okay at best you can buy 15 to 20 stocks yes okay and you cannot buy everything that moves yes right so you are you are better of owning i'm better of like somebody asked me what's what are you buying and i said i haven't bought anything yes i there are so many stocks which i know which are going to do well but i don't have the capital again it comes down to knowing I I saw SRF at 165 rupees, 10 paid up. So I'm talking about you know probably eight rupees or 10 rupees at uh, this. I don't don't even know. Yes. It was available at three p multiple. The management had done a buyback. It had done everything. It picked all fit all the this, but pesa nahi tha. And yes. I did not want to sell something that I owned and uh, and buy. It's just it's a matter of discipline for me. So, but how you manage your mindset? Like, if you are right now, your stock is consolidating, it is fall. Then how you see uh, it is going? And my mindset, mindset, my sir, bolu. Three, four bar, nokri jate jate baj gayi. Two thousand and nine, everybody was bullish on infra. I was on in pharma, and you know all the distributors were coming and saying ki bhai, ye kya le rahe ho? Chal toh ra India bulls or ye? And that was a peak for those stocks. Yes. Right. Ra last one year when we after immediately after COVID. Right? What were the stocks which were actually doing well? It was all the winners of your previous uh, bull market. Yeah, quality FNCG names. It was. Yeah, and you look at it. What has happened after that? Then right? they didn't perform. So none of none of anyone who knew me, I'll be very honest with you. Our clients did not have faith in our stocks. They were saying, "Chal to rahe HDFC Bank, chal to rahe Kotak Bank," and but we have to look at the longer term trend. And but we held on to it. we held on to it we convinced our clients and luckily for us all our clients majority of our clients have stuck around with us so what do we do what you have to do is right what you feel is right yes you right 2009 i nearly lost my job okay 2013 if i was employed somebody somewhere sorry 2013 uh, like i quit uh, my previous organization and they sold off all my small cap stocks and they went into large caps because that time small caps had a bad name Yes. And you know so what were the stocks that we owned? We owned Supreme Industries. We owned uh, Astral Poly. Yes. And, and everyone from the bottom they would have they've grown fifteen x fifty x two hundred x from those levels. Whether I would have held on or not is a different thing. Two thousand and twenty with the stocks that I had, if I was employed some somewhere else, I would have lost my job because nobody yes. wanted to buy those stocks. Nobody wanted to buy metals. Nobody wanted to buy uh, commodities. So don't you get fear like tomorrow will be more worse than today? Like if stock your stock no, is falling, tomorrow is going to some... be tomorrow is going to be better than to- today. I uh, I started with a twenty five thousand salary, so there is no okay. way that uh, tomorrow is going to be worse than. No no no, uh, means uh, on your stock perspective. Like uh, if your stock is falling and another one is running, then you don't get that. Yeah, so or twenty percent gives it there. Who gives? Look, who? Who? Kisi ko nahi malum hai. Yes. ठीक है जब bot market bot bottom होता है ना. तो सबकी फटती है अब ये मत सोचो कि चाहे वो यू गो एंड सी एनी ऑफ द टीवी इंटरव्यूज इन मार्च 2020 एवरीबॉडी वाज कंप्लेनिंग यार वी आर लूजिंग होप ऑन द गवर्नमेंट ये देश ऐसा है वैसा है थोड़ा मार्केट ऊपर 4 साल में सब लोग बोलेंगे इंडिया इज अ सेकुलर ग्रोथ स्टोरी 
So yes. one one thing you have to understand is when anyone talks about secular bro story in an industry that is uh, or a country that is probably the peak for that. That is the cyclical peak for it. Yeah, like it was being uh, Nasdaq, marketed. Right? Nasdaq six months back. I in the last two years, two common things that I've seen is I've met a lot of NRIs for our offshore fund, and nobody wanted to invest back in India. They all wanted to invest in Nasdaq. इनको किसी को कुछ टेक्नोलॉजी रिलेटेड समझ में नहीं आता है बट दे ऑल वांटेड टू इन्वेस्ट इन फैंक्स राइट एंड इवन लाइक द बिगेस्ट बियर्ड ऑन लाइक आई वोंट बी टेकिंग द नेम ऑन द नैसडक इवन लॉन्च द नैसडक एन एफओ द आईसीआईसी ओके ओके दे फाइनली लॉन्च द नैसडक वो तो एंड आफ्टर द वन मंथ इट पिक अप ओके ओके ठीक है चलो विल टेक द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन प्लीज थैंक यू थैंक यू बाय थैंक्स अ लॉट थैंक्स अ लॉट Thank you, Shubham. Next up, we have Prachiti. Hi, Prachiti. Hi, Prachiti. Hi, hi, Pratiksha. Hi, Sita. Uh, good morning. Good morning. It's, yeah, it's still morning. Yeah, thirteen <laughs> minutes more to go. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Sita, I know you. Um, you are a big fan of Peter Lynch. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, after reading Peter Lynch, like, why did you uh, uh, get out of your stocks after making like twenty, thirty, forty percent profit? was this before you read peter lynch or see, these, after see pr- uh, prachiti these are all learnings of uh, learnings of your stock market the whole point okay. is majority of the people make 10 to 20% profit in the stock markets and eventually lose 70 80% uh, when they make a loss right nobody is okay. born a 100 bagger uh, this you have to understand you graduate over a period of time the biggest the guys who become successful are the ones who learn from their mistakes right i'll give you an example okay. i bought amar raja at uh, i bought amar raja at 500 rupees sorry 300 rupees mm-hmm. and it went down to 200 rupees and eventually i sold it at 3000 rupees and then after the, uh, and after that it went up another 5x that was mm-hmm. my biggest okay. learning but okay. uh, as i said then what was my other learning I, how did i use it i bought excel crop care right at the peak in 2007 it was available at 4p multiple and it went down to 69 rupees in the bear market so i lost 50 60% but i did not sell it and eventually it went down to 4000 rupees that's where i sold it so i made a 40 bagger so because of so many 20 30% and then i learned from those mistakes right my biggest biggest win came in avanti free then i'll tell you this guys this this is a very interesting story where we own nearly 34% of the company stock uh, from 90 to 100 whatever we bought then the stock went to 225 and then happened the uh, small cap crisis of 2012 13 the stock from 225 went to 90 rupees again imagine right you own 34% and then bsc came up with some mechanism where the straight uh, stock got traded in an hour only for 10 minutes aur wo bhi call auction hota tha matching hoga to stock trade hoga nahi hoga to nahi hoga so effectively the stock had become fully li- illiquid you couldn't sell the stock and you own 4% the earlier me if i hadn't learned my this the moment it would have come to 120 130 i would have sold it and if definitely not then i would have definitely sold it at the previous peak which was 225 but because i learned my lessons i wrote it and it, then it became a 200 bagger for us so you don't we are not born we are not born with this whether it is a christian or whether it is a lionel messi or a cristiano ronaldo they are not born they they have to practice a lot so even in the markets you have to practice a lot okay fascinating one more question uh, since you mentioned you did a report on bajaj auto finance no. when it was available uh, at, i don't know whatever pe and a 3000 crore market cap no 300 crore market uh, cap. 300 crore, wow uh, so <laughs> did i mean while doing a report did you get any sort of conviction or did you feel i mean did you uh, did you think about buying it or not buying it did you form any opinion about the company so it was again as i said you know it was available at 3 4 p multiple and i'll be honest with you a lot wow. has changed since then a lot has changed okay. since then so i'm not going to use that and say oh wow i, I was the first one to identify it because after that they went into insurance they went into finance they, they were only an auto finance company earlier and then they've moved into other finance and everything but the whole point of bringing that up was that if i identified at 4p multiple and i see the amount at that point in time 
so these are all the learnings prachiti what i'm trying to say is these are all the learnings that you buy stocks at 4 p multiple and i made good money on it it went up 300% for me but the whole point i'm trying to say is yeah uh, that's 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 uh, that's it so I was just curious, you know, that uh, because you were there at that time, did you see anything interesting about the company? Nothing. Nothing uh, was interesting. Okay. Nothing. Was okay. Interesting. All right. It was a dull okay. company. Okay. No one asked. It means no analyst meet, no conference call, no. You know, very difficult. So the company secretary said, "Bad thing." Because as a sell side analyst, you had to speak to the management before you write a report, right? So okay. So there was there was no IR. There was nothing. Yes, but a lot of things have changed. So let's not put it that I was the first one to identify. No, I was not, because the character of the company changed completely after that. Okay, so so we yeah. can't learn anything from it. Like you know, okay, okay, this is this is one thing that I noticed about the, the company, or is, or some sort of pattern that that you know you could apply to future uh, companies that you are interested in and see. Oh, that, these are one pattern that I learned yeah. is never sell. So when Buffett says my favorite holding period is forever. i i see that i see that not with just buffett but i as i said i see that with some of the real stalwarts of indian investing as well okay yeah thank you thanks bye uh, thanks to that yeah thank you prachiti uh, next up we have uh, vineet with us hello vineet hey hi vineet vineet you're on mute Okay. I guess there is a technical glitch. So uh, next. Hi, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, you're audible, Vinit. Please go ahead. Am I audible now? Yes, yes, you are. Hello. Yeah, please go ahead, Vinit. Wait, we can hear you. Let's get somebody okay. else, uh, Dipika. Yes, 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 yes. Next up, we have uh, Mehul Sanghani. Hello, Mehul. Hi, Mehul. Go ahead, Mehul. Yes. Ah, uh, hi. Good morning. Ah, uh, hi. Acha. I have one uh, very simple question. so uh, uh like you guys are uh, in market since long time but uh, mm. uh, for retailers like us mm. uh, we don't understand the balance sheet we don't understand what is pe ratio what is earning per share humko ye sab samajh mein nahi aata hai to find Arre. out a good fundamental stock we uh, tend to uh, do whatever research is available on uh, social media Uh, or or for example uh, you people uh, give us the stock uh, fundamental uh, through your <laughs> fund no no uh, through for, i mean through social media channels so what a retailer should uh, first see while selecting the stock for maybe it is for a short term or maybe it is for a long term okay hello um, uh, you know this is uh, uh, the chances of you um, succeeding in life in a blind marriage is higher than you listening to social media handles and picking stocks see a lot of people come and ask me give me stock picks give me this and i say it's stupid it is please do not for you know one of the best handles twitter handles that i know of is alpha ideas in india okay and he doesn't give stock ideas he gives you a lot of knowledge please follow him jo twitter handle pe stock de raha hai wo tumko ullu bana raha hai and i think it's a crime it really is a crime log aate hain how do you know whether that guy is successful or not successful second how do you know whether th- th- that guy might have a capacity to hold a stock 70% down aap you know do do you i can buy a stock and i can see 50% down and i will not have any problem so please do not please do not listen to any of the you know let me not abuse uh, be abusive here uh, on uh, on a recorded session but please don't listen to any of the guys who give you to, uh, stock ideas uh, they're just trying to dump their st- stock onto you i will never give you a stock idea if i have not bought it 
एंड यू डोंट नो वेयर यू आर इन द चेन मैं बेचने के पहले आपको बता रहा हूं या लेने के बाद में आपको बता रहा हूं सो बी वेरी वेरी केयरफुल इफ यू लर्न टू इन्वेस्ट बट मोर इंपॉर्टेंटली यू कैन ऑलवेज यूज अ म्यूचुअल फंड टू इन्वेस्ट व्हाटएवर यूज एन ईटीएफ बट अगर आप बोलोगे वन ऑफ माय बिगेस्ट ग्रॉसेस आई स्पोक टू अ लेडी इन द यूएस यस्टरडे फॉर अ ऑफशोर फंड शी इज अ डायरेक्टर विद अ ग्लोबल फार्मा कंपनी and she said uh, i plan to retire in 5 years and i said okay how do you invest no i have couple of financial advisors they do the investing for me i said do you know where they are investing what they are she said no i don't know and i said you spend 10 12 hours a day earning your money and you don't even spend 1 hour a day deciding where you want to invest the money you need not invest directly in stock markets but you can at least go and invest through etfs and any of those things but at least figure out okay why i should invest here so first you first and foremost teach yourself investing and i'm not talking about stock investing i'm talking about investing in general so don't don't listen to the, don't listen to any of the twitter handles who recommend stocks they're all dumping them on you yeah what is that yeah Deepika, okay. can we have a i hope question? that un- yes yes we have uh, puneet pujara with us hello puneet yeah hi dipika hi siddharth big fan of your investment framework thank you so two quick uh, questions uh, one is why you decided not to outsource your research like i have heard you saying that it's internally in house no Correct. brokers or no and services that you take so one is that what was the reason for it and second i would press you a bit on this sorry we lost you hello to sell sorry sorry we lost you puneet. hello i think uh, puneet I, i just we lost you in the middle you, we got the research part okay, so the second uh, second thing that you were asking yeah, so sec- yes yeah, so second question is if we do the pareto analysis of the time spent in the markets 80% of the time is spent just on what to buy correct but less than 20% of the time is spent when to sell correct and this is okay. good would you like to put it for more more and more years but still you have sold uh, right so you. i want to yeah yeah thanks so i got your question i'll answer that okay uh, first uh, your first question is on research see that is a very very core core part of our activity that's the most important activity we survive we succeed we fail we do whatever on the basis of our research see if i buy a stock and if i make money on it i know why i have made money on it that is how it is it comes through pattern recognition if i buy a stock and if i lose money or if we do internally research and we lose money then we know why we have lost money right if we buy on i have seen people in the markets uh, including me right when the stock goes up the uh, the analysts don't get credit i take it on my own and when the stock goes down <laughs> you know no i'm not I'm joking but at the end of the day if the stock goes up the fund i have seen in so many years as a fund manager takes the credit and if the stock goes down he blames the analyst right so we know we don't have anyone to blame we go right we go right on our own uh, this if we go wrong we learn from it so one uh, is very important second you came to the pareto principle i say we spend 10% of time bu- uh, researching to buy a stock we spend 80% of our time researching the stock while we are holding and we spend 10% of the time deciding when to sell so पीपल विल से अरे पांच साल से आप लोग सेम स्टॉक होल्ड कर रहे हो तो आप कर क्या रहे हो राइट वी ट्रैक आर कंपनीज लाइक हॉक सो दैट्स व्हाट इट इज अबाउट दैट इज व्हाट इट इज अबाउट बिकॉज दैट इज हाउ यू विल बिल्ड कन्विक्शन ओवर पीरियड सो इट इज द बाइंग इज द मोस्ट इजीएस्ट डिसीजन चार पीएमए स्टॉक ले लो राइट विद कैश ऑन द बैलेंस शीट यू आर नेवर गोइंग टू लूज मनी व्हेन टू सेल इज द बिगेस्ट दिस या Can we have the next question, please, Dipika? Yeah. So, I, just a quick follow up on the first one. Yeah. So, when you say that it's completely internal research, and so for say for example, channel checks, getting the primary data. So, most of the funds uh, use the sell side services because of the uh, infrastructure uh, right. limitations, bottlenecks, right? So, how do you address that bottleneck issue? So we we do it internally. See, most of the funds are tracking five hundred stocks, thousand stocks. I don't know why. we stack track 100 200 stock and our best channel checks are unlisted companies right if 
we like a company and steel we will not speak to the listed guys we will speak to the unlisted guys because they are likely to give you true picture unko unka market cap badhane ka nahi hai right the most stupid thing to go and do is talk to management no management is ever going to tell you that my company is bad if you come to me and ask me how's equitas i'm going to tell you it is good <laughs> right it is for you to decide so we do a lot yeah but how do you needs i am talking to about that part so yeah we do we we have over a period of time right it's so easy with internet you just do look for cement dealers in india and there are uh, you will get everyone you go to company's website they have their dealers uh, written over there you just call them up we have a very fantastic client base right we have more than 200 clients we know uh, and a lot of these guys are very this so we know uh, we know a lot of industries one of our company uh, and we get good feedback from that okay yes i know that i know this company i'm uh, i i have friend who's a dealer for this company so we we come to know about it it's not that difficult right philip fisher did on his own at least i have uh, five brilliant analysts with me <laughs> understood make life thank a you. lot easier for me <laughs> thank you said that i really say we have the best research team So next up we have uh, Sandeep Nirman. Hello Sandeep. Uh Sandeep are you there? Okay. So we'll take uh, Amit Chaudhary. Hello Amit. Yeah, hi. Uh I have a very uh, basic question. See, uh, we are uh, you know we have lot of parameters to judge during the investment and everything, right? so uh, what should be the prime parameter to judge means uh, any top 5 or any top 3 things to which we should uh, you know uh, take care or it should be according to the industry and everything could you please uh, brief a bit about it as buffett said rule number 1 don't lose money rule number 2 don't lose money rule number 3 follow rule number 1 and 2 if you do not lose money in the markets eventually you will make money right lot of people come and ask me yaar wo 10 rupees ka stock hai main le leta hu kya hoga at the most 10 rupees hi jayega na if you have that mentality you're not going to succeed uh, 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 virat kohli doesn't wake up and say yaar aaj practice nahi karta hu kya hoga koi farak nahi padega so i, I, I think uh, that's that's the only thing that i would say that don't lose money obviously the market is such that in the interim you because of market fluctuation everything stock prices will go down i don't mean it by that that sense ki bhai 10% stock chala gaya to aap bech do par kaisa nahi hota but long term your oh, this should be i don't want to lose my money this is my hard earned money have that mentality i'm going to be very very careful about which stock i'm going to invest in yeah Uh, sir, my question was something different. I think you you took me in a different direction. Yeah. You said uh, I asked about few parameters, few uh, you know uh, bookish. Uh, so book okay, okay, got it, got it. So okay, parameters. So, so the I first parameter is you know buy stocks at low valuation. Buy stocks. Uh, valuation in the terms of price to enterprise value or price to book value. Again, valuation. Is, term, see, valuation is a very very complex complex thing. Valuation is an exactly. art. It is not a science. So I cannot say. Yeah. But to on a safe safe uh, this, let's say let's start with the P ratio, okay. And if you okay. buy a basket of fifteen eighteen stocks, just looking at the P ratio, I think all said and done, people will say cash flow. Yeah, wo complicated hota hai. Toh professionals ke liye hota hai, right? We don't look at P ratio only. We look at multiple factors. But as a layman, I'm telling you that. Hey, kam karo yar. Aap hai na uh, iska book Peter Lynch ka book one of one Wall Street three four five bar pad lo. usme he is he is written it for the layman right and as a professional i re, I, i recommend it so he is put it out very simply about investing he buy cash rich companies buy asset rich companies buy them at low valuations right one fail safe this is buy stocks at uh, you know where the promoters are buying if insider report aata hai buyback aata hai kharid lo very likely that uh, the promoter believes that something is going to happen that is why he is buying the shares from the market these are the disclosures which come on the stock uh, this but as i said your best bet is to learn about investing rather than learning about just the stock market all right thank you so 
Amit, we also have a session. Like Siddharth has already done a session where he's talking about his research process. So I guess you can refer to that too. So uh, Siddharth, we are closing the session now. Yeah. We have had amazing uh, audience response today, over 700 listeners. Okay. So I guess your mistakes are interesting to everyone. Uh, everybody loves mistakes. So do you have any closing <laughs> notes? Some trolls as well out yeah. there who want, want masala. <laughs> no, guys, thank you. Uh, as I said, I promised you I'll be honest uh, in uh, with my discussion. And uh, here I am. I grow, I learn, I become stronger because of my mistakes. I'm a completely flawed person. Uh, everybody is flawed and I'm more flawed than most people. So I don't claim to be a saint. I'm not one. And yeah, that's it. Thank you a lot. And thanks for joining. Yeah. So thank you everyone. Thanks for this amazing idea. We welcome such more uh, ideas and questions from you, which give us further content for going on. So if you want to see us more, please keep commenting. Please keep uh, referring your friends to these uh, videos. I'm sure they